Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. Today we are going to talk about design and simulation of half wave AC to DC control rectifier for R load. This is a circuit diagram of a control rectifier used for an R load. As it can be seen, since there is only one thyristor involved, it will only conduct for one half of the half cycle. As a result, it is called as half wave AC to DC control rectifier. These are the design parameters. Let us assume a sinusoidal uh, supply voltage of 230 volt uh, and the firing angle is assumed to be 30 degrees and a load resistance of 10 ohm is chosen. The first step is to determine the average value of output voltage which is given by this formula. Uh, we will be substituting uh, the value of alpha over here and finding uh, the value of output voltage. One of the most important commonly made mistakes is Vm should be substituted as 230 into root 2. So that is one of the commonly made mistake so be careful with that the next step is to determine the rms value of output voltage so it's been given by this formula uh, one of the commonly made mistakes with respect to this formula application is that uh, you have to ensure that the calculator is kept in radiance mode or you can suitably convert it into radiance mode while applying this formula so you'll be getting 160.27 volt the next step is to determine the average output current once we have v out we'll be able to find out i out easily and it's 9.66 in this case. One of the most important step while entering input parameters in pulse generator in MATLAB is that uh, uh, the frequency is usually 50 Hz for AC supply in India. Uh, so therefore the reciprocal of the frequency is 0 0.02 seconds. So 360 degree corresponds to 0 0.02 seconds. That means 180 degrees, a half cycle of it corresponds to 0 0.01 seconds. Therefore every degree corresponds to 5.55 into 10 power minus 5 seconds that means if we are about to set a firing angle of 30 degree we have to set it in time uh, in MATLAB that's why we have to multiply 30 into 5.55 into 10 power minus 5 so you'll be getting 1.665 into 10 power minus 3 seconds so we have to enter this in MATLAB so these are the commonly made mistakes uh, and uh, common confusions that are usually involved once we have all these we will straight away go to MATLAB so let's go to MATLAB Alright, here we are. So one of the most important uh, components uh, that are required is a power gear block that uh, samples uh, the simulation period in time uh, with respect to discrete and continuous domain so that if that is not used you will not uh, get the simulation to be run so that's one of the most important steps so we need an AC voltage source uh, and uh, we also need a thyristor so search for thyristor it's always uh, preferable if uh, you are searching these components because uh, you will not waste a lot of time in uh, finding it out uh, in this element section so once we have that uh, we also need uh, an RMS uh, value block so we can search by mean uh, so we will be getting both mean and RMS value together so uh, one of the most important steps is we have to select this RMS value and not the one that is there above so be very careful with this that is used for a different analysis uh, totally it's a different story altogether so be very careful with this uh, we need a display screen uh, to display the output wave for this do just display the magnitude of output voltage we need a scope to determine the the output uh, waveform so add the scope as well then you need a series RLC branch we will be using a resistive load so we need that add this block as well uh, we need a pulse generator block so add pulse search for pulse generator and add pulse generator block as well so once we have all of them let's arrange this according to the positions that they are essentially supposed to be so uh, the AC voltage source should be across the input side and the current in series with the thyristor and the voltage across the load we have a continuous power gear block over here so let's enter the parameters one of the most commonly made mistakes by students is that they'll directly enter 230 volt so that is not supposed to be done we we need to enter the RMS value that is 230 into root 2 325.26 is the voltage that we have to enter um, and once that is done uh, we have to change the frequency to 50 Hz uh, according to Indian standards so uh, we have to enter the parameters in pulse generator. This is one of the commonly made mistakes as well. So we're doing it for half cycle if you're assuming it for 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, pulse width doesn't matter at all. You can change it to any one, any of the values because the thyristor will automatically turn off, turn off during negative half cycle. 
so one of the most important steps is to enter the phase delay as i already told you earlier that uh, one degree corresponds to 5.55 into 10 power minus 5 seconds so you have to multiply this value with 30 so 1.665 into 10 power minus 3 is what you get so 1.665 into 10 power minus 3 uh, is for 30 degree uh, firing angle so you can do it uh, for different values as well um, just be careful with the process uh, once you are clearly aware of it you will be uh, able to get it we are not using a measurement port so i disabled it the type of load that is used is a resistive load and its value is chosen to be 10 ohms so enter that value as well um, we are measuring usually uh, like we have to connect uh, the ammeters in series in order to measure the current so we are using that um, we need to measure the rms value of the current um, so we are using an rms block we can um, use another one for a voltage uh, value as well so voltage uh, voltmeter is connected across the resistive load and uh, an rms value can be displayed over here we also can use this to determine the mean value uh, however we need additional displays so we'll be copy pasting two more displays over here just to display the uh, values accordingly let's connect it uh, so one of the most important steps is to remember is that these displays will only give you the magnitude it will not give you the sign so once we are clear with the thought like the thought process behind the entire uh, circuit we can connect it uh, to see the waveform as well this is the scope that is used so pulse generator should be given to the gate terminal of the thyristor uh, let us set the runtime to one second uh, because these are static loads we don't need such a huge amount of simulation time so let's get started uh, let's uh, click on run so all right um, these are the output values that we are getting right now um, so one of the most important things to remember is to change the fundamental frequency to 50 hertz uh, we can check the waveform by double clicking on it uh, and suitably zooming this so it's very clear that uh, the voltage is clamped for the negative half cycle so it doesn't conduct uh, it's equal to zero we can clearly observe this in the waveform uh, so yeah that's it any questions please do uh, let me know by dropping uh, these questions in the comment box uh, if you like this video please do like it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thank you